Hey, welcome to today's episode of Oncology Data Advisor. Today, we decided to have this recording um, after hearing about the breaking FDA approval of inovolacib with pelvocyclib and fulvestrin for breast cancer. And here to tell us more about this exciting new approval is our board member, Dr. Jason Mwabi. Dr. Mwabi, thanks so much for jumping on today. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. I'm excited to hear more about um, this exciting approval. First of all, would you like to tell us a little bit about the background behind this approval, uh, why it was investigated, and why it's needed? Yeah, th this is uh, very exciting, actually, uh, that precision oncology keeps getting earlier and earlier in the course of uh, breast cancer, which is something we envision in the future to be used even at the very early stage of uh, cancer, like stage one, stage two, and stage three uh, breast cancer. Uh, but this is important is because some of our patients, thankfully not the majority, uh, but some of our patients, when they have early stage cancer, especially with high risk features, uh, uh, they tend to have uh, recurrences early on. So the cancer tend to come back early on, either while they were they are taking their adjuvant, so after surgery therapy, or within a year uh, after taking that therapy. And usually those cancer, when they come back in this time frame, they tend to be more aggressive and tend to be resistant to a lot of the therapies we try to do subsequently. And it's important to tackle the mechanism of the resistance. And uh, one of the major mechanism of resistance is a specific mutation uh, called PIK3CA. And this mutation is not acquired. It doesn't come later on in the course. Usually this mutation is what we call a truncal mutation, meaning it's a mutation that happened early on in the process of carcinogenesis. It's a mutation that's needed to form the cancer in the first place. And that's what drives the cancer. Uh, um, so if it's there, it's there from the beginning and it can be relied on heavily by the cancer cell to uh, resist a lot of the treatments that uh, we are trying to give uh, uh, our patient to try to fight the cancer. So having a targeted therapy that can target that specific mutation Kind of, if you want, you have a switch that's in the on position and now we're turning it in the off position. Uh, the idea is doing that can make a big dent in the fight against this type of cancer and can restore uh, sensitivity to the therapies that we are trying to, uh, to give our patient. So basically, the, the, the treatment for patients with metastatic breast cancer first line is always a combination of endocrine therapies, so what we call in layman term anti-hormone therapies, and we try to combine them uh, with targeted therapies. And the main target therapy, the standard of care, is to use what we call a CDK4 and 6 inhibitor. Now, when somebody has a PIK3CA mutation, this therapy, although it can work, but doesn't work as effectively. So the idea is if somebody, if, if a cancer does have that mutation, the addition of an inhibitor of that mutation, so a, a, P, a, a PI3 kinase inhibitor that can inhibit PIK3CA mutation, if we add that inhibitor, can it make this th treatment of endocrine therapy plus CDK46 inhibitor more powerful? So instead of using a doublet therapy, let's do a triplet therapy. And uh, the, the study was very impressive. I mean, uh, the, they showed us the result of the study. It's called the INAVO 120 trial. Um, and in the patient who harbor, uh, or in the tumor that harbor that mutation, they found that the addition of this triplet therapy really improved the outcomes. And I'm going to give you some metrics. So if we look at the progression-free survival, the median progression-free survival, it improved from 7.3 months to 15 months by the addition of uh, uh, this inhibitor called inabolism. And if you look at the hazard ratio was 0.43, meaning more than 50% reduction of the chance of recurrence or death by the addition of this one medication, which is something very powerful to see. If you look at the 12-month mark, so a year after starting therapies, more than 50% of the patient uh, that got the uh, uh, inabolicib were alive with no evidence of recurrence. Whereas the patient who did not get it, only about 30% uh, uh, were alive with no evidence of recurrence uh, without it. So, so very important drug. It really, uh, the more we have options, the merrier, and definitely is for the benefit of our patients. Awesome, thanks so much for the background and sharing the results of the trial. It's great to hear about such impressive results. So what does this approval mean for patients with a subset of breast cancer? How does it impact their treatment options going forward? I really think this is revolutionary because, again, uh, our vision for uh, the future of oncology is precision oncology. And this is precision oncology. This is finding the driver of the cancer and one and, and PIK3CA 
mutation, one of the big drivers of breast cancer. Uh, uh, my department chair, uh, Dr. Debo Tripathi, likes to call it the highway uh, of, of, of cancer growth because they really use it and, and, and feed off it. It's one of the main mechanisms of, of cancer growth. So we know it exists. We know it's there. Why not target it? So this is a specific target to a specific uh, mechanism that the cancer cell is using to grow and prosper. And we can stop it nowadays with those exciting drugs that, that, that we have. Um, so it, 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 it's really great for our patient to have. Uh, it's great that it's getting to the uh, early settings. So this is the first approval of a PIK3CA inhibitor in the first line. Mm. Uh, uh, usually PIK3CA inhibitors, they are available, but we use them in later line uh, therapies. This is the first time we can use them in first line therapy in the metastatic setting. Really exciting. And the way this fits into precision oncology really sounds like it's the future of oncology. <laughs> for sure. So now that um, Inovolsib has been approved, what are some important things to keep in mind, both for providers and patients, um, both before treatment, as far as mutation testing, um, as well as side effects during treatment? Yes, so, so testing for mutation is very important. Again, because the future is for precision oncology, and if we don't know the mutational landscape, we don't know what to target. Uh, uh, um, and, and this has been very controversial because some physicians like myself, we like to know those mutations from the beginning. So we tend to do what we call this genetic sequencing, and that's different than genetic testing. I, I, I really wanna I wanna take this uh, this opportunity to differentiate the both because it's very confusing to our patient. When we talk about genetic testing, we're not testing the cancer cell. We're testing healthy cells to see if there is any hereditary mutation that is acquired from the mom or the dad, and that can some of some of those mutation can carry along uh, along um, and they can uh, uh, be involved in the process of cancer. So an example for that are BRCA one and BRCA two mutation. So again, those are tested on healthy cells because all the cells of our body will have them. When we, ta when we talk about uh, uh, um, sequencing, gen genomic sequencing of the tumor, so this is different. This is done for the tumor because as the tumor growth, it differentiates itself from healthy cells, but ac by acquiring new errors at the genetic level, that's what we call mutation. And uh, sequencing uh, the genome of the cancer can unmask all those mutations that are not available in healthy cells. So it's really important to make those two distinctions because a lot of patients uh, sometimes get confused, rightfully so. Their name is very close to one another. Uh, but yes, so doing sequencing, deep sequencing of the tumor genome, uh, uh, some people like to do it uh, later because currently precision oncology before this approval was done later lines. So some people would be like, maybe the cancer will acquire a new mutation. Why should I check? Why do I have to check it early? I can check it later on once those therapies are indicated. But now with this approval, there is a big uh, uh, argument to do it early on, because right away you want to know if this mutation is there or not. And, and, and the other thing we just mentioned before, like this mutation, what we call uh, the medical jargon is truncal mutation, meaning this mutation happened very early on. Uh, uh, in the process of cancer. So it's available. If it's there, it's there from the beginning. It's not one of those mut mutations that can be acquired due to treatment selection. Uh, an example for that is ESR1 mutation, which we have another indication for. This mutation happens because of treatment selection. When we're treating with a certain agent, the cancer learns how to mutate itself to evade that therapy. So these are different type of mutation. So uh, having this approval, I'm gonna, we, we are definitely going to see much more sequencing early on which is excellent because once we know what's, what are the mutation available, we can develop better agents and start using them earlier. Great. Thanks for the overview of that as well. Um, so what are some of the things that patients could should keep in mind as far as side effects? Yeah, so that's very important. Uh, I mean, all, all our with all the excitements we have with our drug, it's very important to highlight uh, uh, some of the side effects that our patient uh, uh, should expect. Uh, now, the good thing is, although the, there is some side effect with this medication, it's not like a, a medication that you take and you won't feel anything. There is some side effect, but they are manageable. And uh, uh, I'm very confident that all oncologists, at least in the US, uh, can manage those side effects. But the main side effects that we see uh, are uh, related to metabolism. Uh, so hyperglycemia is something that that, that we see uh, with, those, with all uh, drugs that target uh, that mutation or that pathway, because that pathway is used in insulin, 
and blood sugar metabolism and regulation. So that's something uh, it needs to be kept an eye on. Uh, usually before starting, uh, the physician will check an HbA1c, make sure that the sugars are fine, and then they will uh, monitor the blood glucose uh, um, <clears throat> at different interval as they're taking that medication. And if they need to intervene, if somebody is pre-diabetic and they need to intervene early with a therapy such as metformin, it's highly encouraged uh, to prevent uh, this hyperglycemia. Uh, the other uh, side effect that we tend to see with this drug uh, <coughs> uh, pertain to GI disturbances. So these are pills at the end of the day. Uh, uh, like all pills, some people are more sensitive. They have more uh, sensitive stomachs than others. So nausea uh, can be seen, vomiting can be seen. So then it becomes a learning curve. Uh, uh, some patient will, will, it doesn't matter. You can take it with food, without food, but it depends on the patient. Some patient, their stomach is so sensitive on an empty stomach when they take pills. So those have to eat something before they take the pills. Some people are the opposite. If they eat something and then they take pills, then they feel very nauseous. So then they have to take an empty stomach. So it becomes a, a, a learning curve and each uh, patient will be different than the other one. Uh, the third thing is the diarrhea. Uh, again, <clears throat> those are pills. Some systems will lead to more diarrhea. Some patients, some systems will lead to more constipation. We see predominantly diarrhea with this drug, but it is what I, I always tell my patients: is front-loaded, meaning it happens early on and tend to go away with time. Uh, so initially, patient might might need some support with some anti-diarrheal medication. That again, I'm very confident that all oncologists in the U.S. are comfortable dealing with the with the side effect and providing the appropriate support here. The last two uh, side effects uh, that we tend to see, one is rash. It doesn't happen to a lot of patients. Maybe it's seen about a third of the patient. And this is uh, easily manageable with uh, taking over-the-counter uh, antihistamines, uh, next-generation antihistamines like Claritin, like uh, Allegra, Deprexa, like, uh, those medication that, uh, sorry, not Deprexa, Zyrtec, those medications that are available over the counter, which are antihistamine, which can control it very effectively. Again, the rash is front loaded, it tends to go away with time. Um, and the last one, and very important, is a little bit of mucositis. And that's something that sometimes frustrates the patients. These are mouth sores. Um, there's a few things that can help. Not everybody will experience it, but if it happens, please, please, please talk to your oncologist. Uh, uh, there are some mouthwashes that we can prescribe our patient that can really help uh, prevent it and sometimes treat it. All great information to know, and it's um, reassuring to hear that these side effects can be managed. Um, so as I wrap up today, um, anything else you'd like to share about how Innovulsive fits into the field of personalized medicine or any um, parting thoughts about the approval? Yeah, it, it's a very exciting time that we're seeing precision oncology coming to the earlier line. Uh, this is definitely a strong and solid step into the right direction for a better future for our patients that are finding uh, 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 this type of uh, disease uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of the same uh, uh, initiative that we've, see, what, that we've seen. This is a leap. Uh, this is a big leap uh, in the fight against cancer, breast cancer specifically. Uh, so now that it has started, I'm looking forward to see more Asians make it to the early setting. Wonderful. It's so exciting to hear what a big uh, step forward this is for patients. So thank you so much for coming on today to tell us all about this approval. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.